It's David Wowie, a classic Another Eden character, Tiramisu, now has a manifest weapon and can be stellar, awakened. But even with these upgrades, is she any good? Everyone keeps going on and on about how she's a fixed damage setter, but I went that and got her dealing over 20 billion damage in 5 turns. I'll show you exactly how I did it and I'll let you know if she's worth your time, effort or even money. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if you're feeling generous, donate a thanks or become a super member. Shout out to our first super members, Isaiah and Austin, as well as Best Boy and Bung Po for giving me some great advice about Tiramisu's skill set. Tiramisu is a desert loving, earth piercing dragon summoner and was released all the way back in 2020. One thing that made her stand out was that she deals a fixed amount of damage no matter what the enemy's resistance is. Now, in celebration of the upcoming final chapter of the Rai Saga and to catch her up with the power creep, they've given Tiramisu a manifest weapon, the Heaven Piercer, and you can now Stella Awaken her. I'll go over her skills soon, but for the new players, here's how you can upgrade and Stella Awaken her. There's a hair on my tongue, I think it's my dog's hair. Ugh. Ah. Give me a sec. Oh, I couldn't get it out, so I drank it down. <laughs> I drank it down. Ugh. Anyway, to get Tiramisu's manifest weapon, you need to have finished her character quests and then visit the demon Gramps in Time's Forgotten Stop to battle her level 1 and max level versions. If you're stuck on beating her manifest, there are a ton of guides online at the moment. And if you want your Tiramisu to be effective, you should definitely try and get her manifest weapon because Heaven Piercer makes a huge difference in damage. If you have Tiramisu's 4.5 star character, you can upgrade her to her 5 star version with just one Dragon Ruler Tome, which you can get a random by completing the Man Eating Marsh Another Dungeon. Bring that as well as these other usual required upgrade scripts to the fat, senile old lady at times forgotten stop to get your 5 star Tiramisu. The next thing you want is to Stella Awaken her. If you have her 5 star and are wondering if you should dedicate the time to Stella Awaken her, the short answer is yes. If you want to deal the most amount of damage with her, you got to do it. I'll explain soon. One way to Stella Awaken Tiramisu is to first go to the No Paul Emporium and buy two Dragon Ruler Star Charts, then go to Tiramisu and tap Stella to upgrade her. You can also use all Cosmo Star Charts to Stella Awaken her or pull her in the right banner. There's currently a paid banner we can get her guaranteed as well as a free banner we have the absolutely hope destroying, heartbreakingly low 0.8% chance of getting her on the 10th pull. Good luck with that buddy. Check out my Stellar Awakening video for a more in-depth guide on how to Stellar Awaken characters. Now let's look at Tiramisu's skills and which ones you should choose to deal that multi-billion damage. When it comes to Tiramisu, just remember this, she becomes stronger the more spirit she has and the more dragon origin stacks she has. That's why before we even do anything, Tiramisu consumes one dragon origin stack which looks like one of these. Why is the dragon origin stack so important? You'll find out soon. For now, just remember if Tiramisu has over 200 spirit, there's a chance she won't spend one of these stacks. And if she has over 250 spirit, she has a chance of actually stacking one at the end of the turn. Now why is this a good thing? Basically, the more Dragon Origins Tiramisu has stacked, the more effective her skills become. Beware, you can only have a maximum of 4 stacks. To me, the 4 main skills I would use. The first two could be sort of useful and the last two are the must have skills for Tiramisu. The first skill is a debuff skill called Sand Dragon Form. It slows the enemy down and weakens their resistance to earth for 3 turns. And if you have one Dragon Origin stack, you'll reduce the enemy's power and intelligence by 35% also for 3 turns. If you have 4 Dragon Origin stacked, this will last for 6 turns instead, which isn't bad. Next is the skill called Summoner's Prayer. This stacks 4 Dragon Origin stacks on Tiramisu and inflicts fixed damage on all enemies with the damage depending on how high Tiramisu's spirit is. The max damage kinda sucks for this skill compared to her other skills so the only reason you'd want to use this skill is to stack more Dragon Origins or to use it to restore your statuses and give you status immunity for 3 turns as well as restore 100 MP if you have Tiramisu's manifest weapon. Now let's look at the skills I would personally use 
if you have Tiramisu's Manifest Weapon and have her Stella Awakened. The first is the skill called Twin Dragons, which gets stronger the more you use it. In fact, the name of this overall skill also changes from Twin Dragons to True Twin Dragons to Epic Twin Dragons for each consecutive time you use it. When you use Twin Dragons, it inflicts two very different phases of attacks. The first phase of attack is the one I like the most because it doesn't depend on Tiramisu's stacks and spirit and you can completely buffer up to deal billions of damage like I have. In the first attack phase, you inflict two XL Earth piercing attacks. But that's just the start because your skill multiplier increases the more you use Twin Dragons and reaches its max damage the third time you use Twin Dragons when the name of the skill changes to Epic Twin Dragons. And if you're not using the skill in another force, you get a bonus 300% damage when you have Tiramisu's Manifest Weapon. So this skill ideally is used outside of another force. As a recap, the first thing that happens when you use Twin Dragons is this two XL piercing attacks that get stronger the more you use it. The second phase of Twin Dragons is a fixed damage attack, which looks like a big whirlwind. This is the fixed damage attack you see a lot of people talking about on social media because they use it to clear mobs. This is because your damage will be fixed during the second phase, no matter your enemy's defense. So you can essentially use it again and again, no matter who you're fighting. The amount of damage you inflict with this depends on how high Tiramisu's spirit is with a max 400 spirit and how many Dragon Origin stacks you have. It also increases in damage the more you use it. Best case scenario, you can achieve 48 million fixed damage, which is enough to help you clear a huge chunk of the enemies and bosses in this game. The problem with this skill is that the fixed damage you get may not be worth the time and resources needed to reach this damage. This fixed damage attack is great for whales and hardcore tiramisu fans who have maxed her to level 100 and gotten her as many light points as possible, because you really need to get her close to this to get her to over 400 spirit. This skill isn't so great for new, casual and free players who don't have the time and resources to get Tiramisu to 255 light points and get her to max level 100. And if you spent those same resources on other characters such as Thila Lila Extra Style, Suzette or Sirius for example, you could be dealing well over 48 million damage and even be reaching the multi-billion damage mark with much less effort as you don't need them to have that many light points or be level 100. In summary, the skill Twin Dragons is a skill that gets stronger the more you use it. It has two phases of attacks. The first phase is a 2x earth piercing attack and the second is a fixed damage attack that gets stronger the more spirit and dragon origin stacks Tiramisu has. Just a warning, if you're trying to make Tiramisu stronger by increasing her spirit in battle, it actually doesn't work. For example, increasing Tiramisu's spirit using Yifo Nova style skill called Faith won't increase her damage. Besides leveling her up and giving her light points, you're best to increase Tiramisu's spirit with equipment and grass the ores prior to battle, which I'll discuss soon. The last main skill I'd use is Tiramisu's Stellar Awaken skill, Gay and Burn. If enhanced, it inflicts a double XL Earth type piercing attack on all enemies. When not in another force, you get a 10 times multiplier in damage and for 3 moves your lance damage and critical rate increases. So this is another skill that's best used outside of another force. And when you use this skill during stellar burst, you get a 200% increase in damage plus 4 stacks of dragon origin. If you've learned twin dragons, the skill I just talked about, you'll also inflict it afterwards. That's awesome, but there's even more! Afterwards, you'll inflict an end of turn attack that gives fixed damage on all enemies based on Tiramisu's spirit, capped at 48 million. It appears as this giant bloody meteor, and if you have low spirit though, the damage can actually be kinda anticlimactic. <laughs> Tiramisu's other stellar abilities are also worth upgrading. You can unlock her Battle Star Dragon Origin stacking, which gives you 4 Origin stacks at the start of a battle, a Stellar Burst activation bonus, which is great if you have an all light point team like an Arcadia team, as everyone gets plus 80 to their stats in that current turn, which is awesome, and a Stellar Burst gauge fill bonus, which helps you activate Stellar Burst quicker if there are 2 or more Dragon personality members in the front line. But if you're limited in Stellar points, I'd first start by spending them to unlock Gay and Burn, then by increasing Tiramisu's stats so that her spirit increases, then I'd look into getting these other Stellar abilities. 
All in all, most of the time with Tiramisu, I'd mainly use two skills again and again. Twin Dragons and Gay and Burn. If you're fighting bosses, I'd start with Gay and Burn to get the buffs and then use Twin Dragons three times in a row. But if you're just dungeon and mob clearing, I'd straight up just use the Twin Dragon skill. In long battles, if I ever notice that Tiramisu is low on Dragon Origin stacks, I'd use Summoner's Prayer to top it up. I know Tiramisu's best skills can be stronger when you're not in another force, but during boss fights, I like activating another force on turn 1 because it allows other team members to cast buffs and weaken the enemy, and it also allows me to get to epic twin dragons quicker, and most importantly, activate Stellar Burst as fast as possible. Using this approach, I was able to get Tiramisu dealing over 4 billion damage by turn 3, and over 20 billion total damage by turn 5. To understand how I got to that 4 billion damage mark, we need to look at the team setup and Tiramisu's equipment first. Tiramisu's main role is to be a damage dealer, so you'd want to build a team who supports her, a tank, a support, and someone who can flick pain and poison and hopefully set and awaken torn earth stance because Tiramisu is an earth elemental unit. If you've upgraded the relevant stellar skills, a stellar awakened tiramisu works best with light characters who have the dragon personality. As I mentioned earlier, if your team is majority light, everyone gets that plus 80 to their stats during stellar burst, and if you have two or more dragon members in the front, you reach stellar burst much quicker. And you want to get to her stellar burst for all the sweet benefits I mentioned earlier. So in my case, my tank can support our Milpifia. Milpifia's future sight skills are perfect for increasing everyone's stats, and the future sight tranquility skill is great for healing. Plus, he's a light and dragon character, which fits perfectly with Tiramisu's setup. I did a whole guide on Milpifia, so check it out. My other support is Mune for Alter. Mune for Alter is incredible, one of my favorite characters in the game. I use her charity blend skill to activate Torn Earth Stance, her plea skill to boost up Tiramisu's attack, her I'll do my best skill to improve everyone's stats, and finally, her tampered roast skill to awaken another zone once Torn Earth Stance is activated. Mune Falter's skill T-Break, if equipped, can also inflict pain and poison for 3 turns. If you want to inflict guaranteed pain, you could also use a sidekick like the attack version of Iridian, who inflicts pain on all enemies. I have Ceres in there because like Milpifia and Tiramisu, he's a dragon and light unit, and not only that, he's a fellow piercing unit that is complex complementary to Tiramisu. In my damage test, I had him use Scatterfield to lower the enemy's resistance to Pierce and then Volley Fire. I did a whole guide in Ceres to check it out. I also have two Grasta Holders in reserves. Rise, who's equipped with a shareable Enhanced Max HP Lance and Almighty Power Dragon Grasters, and Suzette, who's equipped with a shareable Almighty Power Sweet Tooth Grasta to give Tiramisu that extra boost. Before we see this in action, let's talk about the best equipment in Grasta for Tiramisu. In terms of weapons, right off the bat, you'd want her manifest weapon, Heaven Piercer, as it easily makes her so much stronger. The next set of equipment depends on how close you are to the 400 spirit mark, because you get the most out of her fixed damage attacks once you get closer to 400 spirit. If you're on the way to having 400 spirit and drool over fixed damage, you can prioritize equipment that increases Tiramisu's spirit. The Grace Armlet increases spirit, and you can equip your best spirit badge. If you're far from that level of spirit and want to prioritize that sweet multi-billion damage, just choose the gear that increases Tiramisu's power and strength. The Bullseye Badge is a fantastic one. Same with Grasta. If you want to improve Tiramisu's spirit so she deals more fixed damage, you can equip her with a standard Pain or Poison Grasta, and then upgrade that Grasta with Spirit Plus Ores. These will increase her spirit according to her light points. Remember, the first phase attacks of Twin Dragons and Gain Burn don't need Spirit. If you're more interested in doing insane damage than fixed damage, then upgrade Tiramisu's Pain Grasper with the usual high damage ores such as the Rose with Thorns ores, Bullseye ores, and Last Stand ores. Now let's watch this in action. So as you can see here, I've got a level 96 Tiramisu that quite hasn't reached 400 Spirit, so her fixed damage isn't as high as you'd see with others you'd see online. I start off turn 1 using another 4, stacking Dragon Origin with the Summoner's Prayer, buffing her up with Gay and Burn, and getting Twin Dragons ready. Then I use other characters to use the skills I mentioned earlier. And the best part of this is that spamming in another force brings me closer to Tiramisu's Stellar Burst, where I can do even crazier damage. And there you go. We're able to activate Stellar Burst by turn 3. 
and tiramisu and Sirius combined inflict about 8 billion total damage. And then afterwards, Tiramisu's epic twin dragon does over 4 billion damage. And by the end of turn 5, I inflict over 28 billion total damage between her and Ceres. Of course, realistically, you won't deal this much damage against every super boss, but hopefully this guy provides a baseline you can work on to then tweak according to the type of boss you're fighting, as every boss can be dramatically different. You can watch this whole damage test at the end of this video. The last and most important question is, should you get Tiramisu or if you already have Tiramisu, should you invest your time and effort to Stella Awaken her and get her to level 100? Firstly, if you're into characters with really orange tans, do it. Do not hesitate. If you want a high damage dealing character, maybe. As you can tell by my damage test with the right setup, Tiramisu can deal insane damage. But if you haven't been building her up over the years, the work you need to put in to Stella Awaken her, get her to level 100, and get her light points way up there to max out her spirit can be phenomenal! And only for you to deal about 9 to 48 million damage when other characters can deal billions. That being said, that fixed damage can still be very useful for mob clearing for a lot of the game's content, especially as it doesn't care about your enemy's defense. So it can be quite fun using Tiramisu this way, and for the hardcore gamers, the whole process of building her up to get her to max stats might be something you'd want to enjoy. But remember, this fixed damage will get tricky once you start fighting enemies with much more HP than the damage she can inflict. If you want good damage dealers that don't require as much work, try the Stellar Awakened version of Suzette, Tsukiya and Thila Extra Style. Suzette, Tsukiya and Thila ES were much welcomed Stellar Awakened upgrades to the classic characters and it seems like Tiramisu kind of falls short. If you want an earth piercing damage unit, Ceres is also a decent earth piercing character. He's also an Arcadia personality unit, so he gets the benefits of being part of an all Arcadia crew. Which makes it disappointing for Tiramisu, because even if they've teased her to appear in the final chapter of the Rai Saga, they didn't give her an Arcadia personality, so she doesn't get the benefits the other Arcadia units get when they team up with each other. Check my Sazanka vid for more on this. Since Melpithia deploys Wind King stance and can turn the Arcadia's element to wind, Ceres to piercing, Sazanka to fire and rise to water, Tiramisu, who's Earth, could have been the Arcadia character who can change the team to Earth. I feel like they've missed the perfect opportunity here, but I'm hoping WFS have even better plans for an Earth Arcadia character. I guess time will tell. Also, even if Tiramisu's fixed damage could be low, she can still deal billions of damage with a non-fixed damage attack, so that could be another reason why you'd want to get her. And another reason why you may want to get Tiramisu is for her lore. I enjoyed her side quest and I'm excited to find out her role in the final chapter of the Rai Saga. If you're a completionist and want every character in this saga, then you better try and get her. If you don't have Tiramisu whatsoever, one reason you may not want to get it is that the Japan Anniversary character is coming in a month and there's no doubt they'll either announce one or a number of very interesting new characters who I'm sure will leave a lot of current characters in the dust. So you better start saving up. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if you found this guide useful, donate a thanks or become a super member.
is a bond to last the ages. Oh hey look, it's a fancy pantsy YouTube end screen. Check out these other videos for more useful and really cool stuff.